Alright guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, it's your boy, Japanese Tutor. Thank you for coming back in. Um, today we're going to keep on going with the same uh, topics as Pawn End Games, but this time we're on the floating squares. Um, if you haven't already, if you could please follow. Um, I don't have a subscribe button, but my YouTube does, so you can go and follow that. It's the same thing, Japanese Tutor. I upload all these streams, um, and welcome. Um, so today we're going to go over the floating square, um, and I'm just going to read from the text, and then just kind of explain it after. Um, and if you guys do not know what's going on in the chat, feel more than uh, free to ask in the in the chat, and I'll try to do my best to answer that, any questions you have. Alright, so uh, the floating square. There are cases in which the king must do battle with two separated past pawns. Past pawns are pawns that have uh, nothing in front of them and no other pawns, right? So these are both passers. And these will be considered connected past pawns because they're connected. Separated past pawns, connected past pawns. Great. Um, so a useful rule in these cases is the floating square rule suggested by A. Studenecki in. 1939. If a square whose two corners are occupied by pawns on the same rank um, reaches, sorry, uh, I'll, re I'll start over. If a square whose two corners are occupied by pawns on the same rank reaches the edge of the board, then one of those pawns must queen. Right? So if we make a square, bam, 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 so right, so boom, boom. And these edges, right, are, they're square. So this is a square right here, right? So it's a five by five. Um, then one of these pawns queens. If, if the square does not reach the end of the board, then the king can hold the pawns. So really, really, really important. So if it was, if they were here, the king could catch the pawns, right? If it were like this, then it couldn't. Right, because it's six, and it would reach here. Really cool, really really cool. Okay, so let's uh, put the example back. Um, so if the square does not reach, if there are two files between the pawns, the king can capture both. If the distance is any greater, he can only prevent their further advance. So maybe, uh, right? Maybe that example was wrong. Um, the square having reached the edge of the board, the pawns will queen regardless of whose move it is. All right, so let's just go into it. Uh, a4, king b4, e4, king captures a4, and then e3, making a queen in two moves, and he cannot catch it because he is not in the square of the pawn, which we went over yesterday. Okay. So now let's shift the pawns to e6 and what are the ones? Uh, a6 and e6. a6 and e6. Now the square only reaches a second rank. All right, this is a square. And the position becomes a draw. In fact, a5 would be uh, bad because king b5, e5, king captures a5, e4, and we are in the square of the pawn so we can catch it. And we've learned this. We've learned this. All right, so let's move this up. So black must play king f6 all right cool king c6 king g7 king c5 it's a draw cool so this is a draw and he has to draw this way because if he commits to getting one pawn, then he can push, right? And then he, he can push. Now, now it's a win because one of these pawns can promote. 
So interesting, interesting, interesting idea. Interesting. Oh, it's lit. <laughs> All right, Maddie Base. All right. Uh, this square does not reach. Okay, so what we're gonna do. Let's examine one more uh, substantive case where we have the pawns like this and pawns like this. Okay. On the queen side, the square does not reach the end of the board, so the pawns can be held by king c3, a3, king c2. Very nice. King c2. On the king side, however, the pawns are already quite far advanced. And, oh, Joe Panther 2001, thank you so much for the follow on Twitch. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you. Now you've uh, joined the chess master squad if you're not a chess master already. And, uh,. True, uh, the king can prevent them from queening so far, but because of Zigzwang, he will soon be forced to let them through. Right? King, so the king has to, like, go somewhere, and then after he does, he can, we can promote. Whereas this one, he doesn't have that case. Right? So we're just going to take, and he doesn't have that luxury. We'll just take, and we're in the square of the pawn, and he cannot take because queen okay great uh, let's go over uh, actually a real game this is uh Khalifman versus belikov in podolsk in uh, 1992 so not too long ago all right and i am in new york so that siren is uh is a common occurrence, kind of like these pawn end games on this channel. All right, so which is uh, I'm gonna give you maybe a minute and a half, and I want you to try to solve this puzzle, okay? And it's white to move, and I'm gonna put on some music, and once the music starts, you have a minute and a half. Ready, set. Go. You guys have another 15 seconds. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, so hopefully, we found it. They're, they're not too hard. It is not a, too hard. Um, I mean, there's nothing we can really do, right? We, as you know, these are corresponding squares, right? So I would have to move off unless I have a tempo move, right? And then I would have to make a move anyways. But here, the correct move, bam. Right? Because if takes, 
Um, although we do have to move, the king can hold these two pawns because the square, right, only reaches here. So that means the king can hold both pawns. The king can hold both pawns, but my pawns are protected. Because if the king ever takes, then I'm making a queen. All right. So let's see what he says in the uh, in the text. Oops, this is a white pawn. The pawn's here. White pawn is here. Okay. So uh, h6. G captures h, and then king f3. Uh, h5 and then c5 there are two files between blacks past pawns the square does not reach the end of the board important so that floating square rule make sure that you use that square very important all right let me put that back on all right and the square does not reach the ends of the board. That means the pawns must be lost. The attempt to defend them with the king is doomed to failure. So I king g7, c4, king g7, c4, c5. Oh, right, right, because we were playing c4. And then they play c5. King h3. King G three, and then he's we can't do anything. He can't come up here because he's over. We're gonna promote, right? So he has to come back, and we can hold both of these pawns. Bam, bam. Ama amazing stuff by Deveretsky. He's just amazing. And Black resigned shortly after that. So we're going to go into a tragic comedies, and this is the series where he takes a game which is just tragedy and makes light of them. And sometimes they're really funny. They most of the time include very, very famous chess players. So yes, even famous grandmasters make 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 mistakes. Sorry. So uh, let's go into this, and this is actually by Nimzovich. Nimzovich uh, is playing the black side of this. So let's create that position. Oh, I tried to navigate and you got lost. And sorry to hear that, Joe Panther. But hopefully, with time, you won't get lost anymore. And since you're in the Navy, right? Navigating is one of your specialties now. out the way let's move this here bam hopefully I didn't come across as rude or ignorant um okay so it is white to move and white played rook d2 so I want to give I challenge you to find the winning line for black Maybe in a amount. I'll give you two minutes because the guys that were playing, they were both GMs. And this is uh, Nimzovich in Berlin, 1928. All right. So he offered the trade of rooks. Now it's up to you to decide whether you want to take the rooks or you want to maybe play another move. Um, and try to see if white wins, black, what, black wins, or draws. Okay. And once the music starts, you have that. So let's uh, put on some uh, some of this. Ready, set, go.
welcome back and hopefully you were able to solve it um this is pretty easy um for just calculating wise whether take takes which is the right plan um he should have just played a5 to be honest and then uh rook a3 putting the rook behind right so i'll show you guys that She should have just played this. This is what the text says. And it's drawish. Or rook a3 immediately. And then if king e4, then a5 and a6. And it's still a draw. Um, but my man decided to trade rooks instead. So rook takes. Oops. Rook takes. King takes. And played f4 and why does he play f4 why does he play f4 right okay so first of all we have to calculate the square of the pawn for both pawns right so one two three one two three one two three one two three okay so this king is in the square of the pawn so if the pawn takes key key you want to stay in the square. So if I take, I'm not in the square of the pawns anymore, right? I'm not going to be in the square. So I, that means I cannot take. But since I have floating pawns and I'm using the floating square rule, that means my, my pawns can promote. They will promote since the corners, since my pawns are on the edge and they go down, they will promote. All right. So, oops, that is here. My king is here. Sorry about that, guys. I'm using the analysis board so we can just make it quicker. So we play king d6 instead, holding the two pawns, and now this pawn's going to promote. King d6. Um, the square d4, and I'm going to just read from the text right now, d4 and g4 pawns reaches the edge of the board that means it is impossible to prevent one of them from queening the same could also be said of white spawns but they are much too late note that the excellent move of the black king from d6 he is prepared to stop either white pawn with minimum effort so a5 g3 a6 King c7, get into the square of the pawn, right? Because it's since he was here, the square of the pawn is now this. So he cannot allow him to get any further. Bam. King e2. d3 check. King captures d3. g2. King e4, g1 equals queen. So let's put the queen on the board. King f5, queen b6, stopping everything. And I, uh, he goes on to play king g5. And uh, so the position that he wants to reach, and I'll show you this in a little bit. Um, but this is the position he wants to reach, if possible. Like, if he can sacrifice these two pawns, like these two pawns are off the board, and let's say this king is here, then this should be a draw. Yeah, because he has this resource, right? And I cannot capture. Um, hopefully we get into that later on. That This is a trick where you're, if you have bishop pawns or rook pawns, you cannot win, but if you have a knight pawn or this middle pawns and you can win this end game by resource of right and then you just bring the king in king comes back you check check you stop him from promoting check get him under get him under the pawn and then bam he can't move anymore and then check me okay but that's uh that's probably for later uh oh um so th so i'll go over it again um, King Dave, you haven't missed much. We just went over the floating square rule, where if, um, and I'll show you that again. 
maybe the, the example that I just had was a really really good example so and I'll link my YouTube later because I upload all the streams there so you guys can watch that as well okay so the floating square rules states so after this right oops after we trade right the floating square rule states that if our pawns uh, of course not obstructed but if our pawns are on the edge of the board like oh no sorry make a square you know the square of the pawn so basically you make a square with this right and if our pawns uh, reach the end of the board then the king cannot stop those pawns from queening right so that's why he played f4 to queen basically and he played king d6 now I want to address uh, Joe Panthers those a pawn the a b pawns are deadly I think trading would be bad for black but but the A and B pawns are deadly, but since they're together, right? So black can't take the, the A or B pawns because they protect each other. But since um, we have this floating square rule, then that means one of our pawns is going to promote and then we can get a queen and our king can stop their A and B pawns since they're together. The, the, unfortunately, the F pawn is not going to be in time to stop it. All right, so I think I think we got this. Um, let me know if you guys have any more questions. So white resigned in this position. So we have an exercise here. We have an exercise. All right, so white's king is here. Black pawns, bam. Oh, and somebody commented that I say BAM a lot. Yeah, but a BAM is such a useful word. Like BAM, you know, you, you can't... You, I, I can't slam pieces on a virtual chess set. So I guess BAM is my equivalent of, like, making a strong move on the board. Okay, I think this is a position. All right, and this is a... Uh, so this is an exercise. Um and it's a uh, black to move black to move here see if you can um if you can get it we'll give you guys two minutes and once the music starts okay three two start
all right so welcome welcome um hopefully you were able to solve it um if you guys have any ideas in the chat please let me know i'll give you guys about 10 seconds and then i will say what i think it is and hopefully i'm right because the the exercises don't have uh, answers on in the text so i'm doing the puzzles along with you guys okay, i think i got it um i think we just want to recreate the position and so what we're doing is we're learning concepts of the end game so that when we are in middle game positions we can convert them to winning end game positions right because if we notice like oh we're gonna have the floating uh square we're gonna have the floating pawns right um or the floating square rule we know that we can go into that position and win this game okay so basically i i'm gonna give you another five seconds all right, so I'm just going to go right into it. I think that you want to play here, right? Because one, the king can stop these pawns. So I just want to play a5, right? And if, like, let's say king a3, then we'll just play c5, right? So, like, now he really, he, he can't come up here, right? Because we're going to promote this way, right? Because if he goes here, then we just play c4, and he's not in time he won't be in the square of this pawn right all right and so let's let's see if there's another way a5 um yeah i don't see any other way um c3 i think that runs into d3 and you can't do this because floating square rule let me see one yeah Right, because again, the pawns are in here. Cool, no? This is this is really really like this. This is a key to chess right here. So if you didn't know this uh, floating square rule, now you do. So now, hope I mean, hopefully you make it to the end of your game. So <laughs> hopefully you make it to the end game. But um, you now you can use this rule to say hey I have a winning position let me just go into this end game and it's easily winning for me or I can create this maybe in a few moves so let me go for this and now you have a plan and a, having a bad plan is better than not planning at all in chess so even if you make really horrible plans um, at least you're planning and then your planning can get better but if you make no plans um, and that's that happens even to stronger players like i would say that that happens to like 1200 1500 players even players at 1800 level they don't plan they just know some tactics and they know some opening stuff uh, they know that they have to get their pieces to good squares but they don't really plan so uh yeah uh fail yeah if you plan if you fail to plan it's uh bad for you <laughs> in chess at least all right, so let's go over the next exercise. There are two more. Ooh boy, two more plans. Okay, let's go to new analysis. A lot of pawns. A lot of pawns. Right, and it is black to move. So again, as always, we're just gonna give you some time, and I'm gonna do this along with you. Um, but this is a little bit tricky, so I'm going to give you, I'll give you about two and a half minutes. All right, and if you have any questions, again, just put it in the to the chat.
All right, guys. So welcome back. Um, okay, so we are on the black side of things, and okay, it is a mistake to take, huge mistake, because white just plays here, and guess what they have? You guessed it, another floating pawn position. Not in time because. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we can queen with check. Okay. All right, so let's go back. All right. So th I think the best move. It's just to play uh, King B7, right? Because now they can't get a floating pawn position. Okay, like, like let's say play King A6, whatever. I mean, C6. Maybe it's just we can just like chill, but, you know? They can't really advance. Okay, we can just capture that. And now we have the same thing where they can advance, but we can't advance either. So it's a draw. So remember. I try to identify winning endgames for your opponent and don't go into them. There was this um, really famous endgame position at Amateur East where this, I think the, the player was like about 1500 and the Fide Master was about 2400 that he was playing. I think 24, 24, 50, something like that. Um, or he was either F FM or IM. A really, really strong player. And he was up a knight or no he was up a bishop but he was the grand ma the i am knew how to make the blockade in the end game so he didn't lose that game instead he drew um actually i, I think what ended up happening was the kid blundered after and he won but the game the game was supposed to be a draw and just knowing your end game really helps out everywhere because from the middle game you know what kind of end game um, structures you want to have or if you know a lot of end game structures that are winning for you then you can go to that so that means that you know what to play in the middle game and also since you know what kind of middle game you want then you know what opening you kind of want to go for so really really cool development like you instead of starting from the opening middle game end game end game middle game opening is the way i think it should be taught or maybe end game opening middle game end game middle game opening for beginning players okay all right next we're gonna go into another thing and i'm just gonna start playing a little bit of music in the background and then i'll this is gonna be a long one so Maybe not, maybe not that one. Let's play it. And we have another exercise. All right, so the king is, the king is here. Oh, let's uh, set up another position. Hey, I'm playing on chess.com analysis board. So if you guys do want to add me on chess.com, my name is Japan Tutor on chess.com. And I'll put that into the chat. Okay. So that's in the chat now. Bam. All right. So it's white to move. And what should white do? Hmm. What should white do? White set a predicament here.
Okay. Uh, so it's white to move. I'm going to put up the music and then you guys can start. Alright, so I think uh, that this music is really, really low, so I'm just going to play a little bit louder. I know that a symphony is really low, um, but maybe if I... Alright, so this is what I think can happen, um, and I think this is the best way to proceed. Alright, I think this is the best way to proceed. And if King D4, like, I don't know, I, I don't find anything better than just to, like, go back. We don't want to push the pawn, right? Pushing the pawn actually leads to an advantage. Because now... And guess what? He's in the square of the pawn. Right? So, we really... Like, if we make the square, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4... One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. We don't reach it. So unfortunately, the king can hold the pawns. So what we have to do is that okay, we have these two. So if he goes here, then obviously okay. Like, let's say um, he goes to here. Oops. You know. Then f four is winning because. Right. We can just play whatever now. And I think... Uh, he's not in time. Because he's not in the square of the pawn. He can only reach here. Alright. And... So that was a pretty easy example. So... The conclusion is that white has a draw. And white should not push the uh the pawns unless a black over commits and then tries to go after one of the pawns and then you can push okay pretty simple stuff okay all right so the next the next uh, thing that he goes into is three connected past pawns so remember connected past pawns are where there's nothing in front of them and they're together so three of them in a row those are really really strong and I also want to know um, let's say that there are pawns here like this um, if two pawns are about to queen like this and they are connected this is a piece alright this is worth a piece in most cases okay so All right, so I'm just going to read from the text. It's difficult for the king to fight three connected past pawns. He has no chance at all. If the enemy has any moves in reverse, if not, then a situation 
of reciprocal zigzag could arise. White to move wins by king b1. Wow. So king b1. Let's say he plays b3. Then you have king b2. Right? Because we can stop both of these advances and now he's in zigzag. Okay? Um, so king b1. Let's say he plays a3. Bam. C3, then king b3. Cool. Uh, so king b1, let's say any other first move by white leads to the opposite result. So let's say we play like here, and now they can just play like, oh, check. Well, we can't play there. Let's not play check. What should we play? Maybe this way. Hmm. Leads to the opposite result, which I think is correct. Hmm. Let's see. So if you play king b2, what happens? Ah, uh, maybe now we he has we play b3. Now he has to decide whether he goes here, and now he doesn't have a choice in plans. And yeah, psh, he takes. So that was simple. Okay, cool. Um, let's do this. Whoa, we we had we actually have a piece now on the board. All right, so there's a pawn here, another pawn here, and another pawn here, and black's pawns are like this. Okay, so I'm going to read from the text. It is white to move, but I'm just going to read from the text. On the queen side, so this is the queen side, the side where the queen is located. Bam, and all this is the queen side. Okay. So on the queen side, we have equality. It would be bad for either side to make the first move there. The question is, who will fall into Zugzwang when the king side pawns? moves run out white would win by playing king h2 or king g2 the most important point is to be able to meet h4 with king h3 All right so for instance uh so let's say king h2 and he wants to meet h4 with king h3 and let's say he plays f5. Okay, and you or f6, whatever. He says king g4 and f6 is fine. Um, and if so, let's go over the f6 one first. F6, king here, f5, king h3, and now it is uh, black who is in Zugzwang. And let's say he plays f4 and then king g4, and I'm able to stop both pawns awesome so let's let's say after king h3 plays f5 after, and then he plays let's go past this king h2 g4 king g2 Okay. And then if he plays f4, then we play king g1 and we're winning. All right? And if king b7 then knight b4 and we cover all the squares, all of the squares. And we're winning because this pawn's going to promote and if he plays here, then we play here and we stop all plans. If he plays here, then we play here and we stop this plan and we can take. And he has to push and then we play here. Cool? Cool. Very nice. Very nice. And the reason we were able to do that is because the king was here and the king has one move. And as soon as the king stops attacking this pawn because he's in Zugzwang, right? He can't play here, so he has to play a move and then 
Now, the win is easy. Oops, my knight cannot take my pawn, but the win is easy from here. We leave our king exactly where it is. We wait for a pawn to move, and then we go to them. So that's how you stop three pawns uh, if we have moves on this side. Okay. So he's saying that nothing would be changed by g4. Oh, <laughs> so this is an actual game by Nun. Nun is a really, really strong player. Uh, he, he messed this up though. 1968. And so what actually happened? All right. So let's uh, let's go back. So this is what actually happened in the game. He played king f2 h4 the correct move because you wanted to meet that with king h3 but he couldn't king f3 h3 king g3 g4 a5 white has to be the first to upset the queenside equilibrium he can no longer place his opponent in zigzag because the f pawn retains the right of moving either one or two squares according to circumstances an important technique to which we shall be returning to um oh yeah so like making that like so this one can go one square or two squares right so retaining that one square might give you an advantageous position so I mean, but here he just plays f5. Um, f5, knight b4 check. King captures c5, a6. King b6. Knight captures d5. King captures a6. c4. King b7. And they claim the draw. Instead of it being a win for white, unfortunately, white draw. And I don't think he can stop these pawns from advancing and protect his pawn at the same time. Unfortunate. You can't even play stuff like this because you have tricks. Right? Now where did your king go? Bing. Right, and then we're just gonna play this. And we're gonna try and checkmate, so it comes here. Bam, queen, so that becomes a queen. He takes, and then we queen this way. Easy, very easy, okay. So, um, this is a, the next chapter, I think. No, it's still Pong Endgames, but um, this is a, another section. This is queen versus pawns and this is what i was talking to to you guys like how to checkmate if they have only one pawn left in the position that he wanted to get into to try to draw um so i'm just going to read from the text and i'll set up the position uh the only cases which have significant practical importance are those elementary endings in which a queen plays against a pawn which has reached next to last rank so the seventh or the second rank um and I'll set this up because he has an example here. The king is here. The pawn is here. Take this off. Take this off. 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 Okay. And this is super, super, super simple. I'm pretty sure everybody in the chat can get it. Okay. And, um,. Let's do this. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to check the king until, let's say, he goes like this under the pawn. Once he goes under the pawn, so it has to be one of these pawns. Oops, not that. that. One of these pawns. You keep checking the king until he goes under the pawn. Once he goes under the pawn, you move the king. Bam bam he can go away from the pawn you attack the pawn he covers the pawn check you're attacking the pawn and you're 
checking him so he has to protect the, he has to go under to protect the pawn you move your king and you keep dancing with him let's say it goes here here Um, check, 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 just to keep doing this dance, and then no, we're winning, basically. That's it, and that's how you checkmate. And you do this for, you use the same technique for those four pawns. Very simple. Um, I don't really want to go into this much. Uh, it's more about more advanced play here, but it's very, very simple. Okay. So he does have an example here, and I got I do want you guys to solve it. Okay. Oh, so this is actually, sorry. It's actually, uh, the PDF is in black and white, so it wasn't clear what color the queen was. All right, so white to move and try to try to see if you can do this um, and report back to me.